are back. What a first match. Thank you for all the patrons who came and asked some of those questions. But we are back now, and we are here. It is the moment for the Star Wars Movie Trivia Schmodown Championship of the World. Five rounds between the challenger, Andrew the Hunter Dimolanta, trying to take on the longest reigning champion in Schmodown history, Alex the Demon Damon, looking to be the only person in movie trivia Schmodown history, Mark, to defend a singles championship five times, a, an individual championship five times. Of course, the Patriots did it six times. They were a team, and he's looking to try to get to that mountain, but he's got to go up against a hungry competitor in the Hunter, Andrew Dimolanta. Christian, you say the Star Wars champion of the world. I say nay, sir, of the entire galaxy, because Alex Damon, as you mentioned, is only four defenses away from tying Ferris Bueller's absence record. But you look at who he's facing today. Andrew, the Hunter Demolanta. He's been so close before. He's tasted victory, and now he's looking for his waist to be adorned with that beautiful belt that's actually usually worn on shoulders. What a five-round contest you and I and everybody watching right now are in for. This is it. It's on the table. And now we're going to see Nerd Chronic. He was the guy who has been building this stuff out. He knew this was going to happen. He's got all the footage, and now you're going to see where it came to be right now. Hello there. What's up, Schmodown fans? Now, I know what some of you, well, most of you, might be thinking. Who the hell are you? For those of you who don't know, I'm Andrew DiMolanta, Schmodown Patreon, and the newest Star Wars competitor. I just want to let you all know that I'm excited to meet you, and let's give them one hell of a match. The gun the faction war has. Andrew DiMolanta. Yeah, he becomes our second patron uh, audition. I was very impressed with his Star Wars knowledge. Yeah. I would like him to play Joseph Scrimshaw in a battle. One of the greatest Star Wars matches I think we've ever seen played. Andrew the Hunter DiMolanta, victorious here. This is the best that the Star Wars division has ever been. Andres Cabrera now on this Rocky-esque journey, finding himself in the finals. That's a pretty incredible journey, Jim. Four, three, two, one found myself in the finals and then you know um uh, it happens if ace um can't beat alex damon i the next person that alex has to go up against is me the guy has proven he can beat everybody but he's got to beat this champion who doesn't seem to be beatable at the moment The greatest champion, maybe, that we've ever seen in the movie trivia, Schmodown. You have now defined this division, the Schmodown. It's yours. You own it. He's, he's defended against Scrimshaw. He's defended against Laura Kelly. He's defended it against Knapsack. And now he's going up against Andres Cabrera. I, I think it's pretty cool being the uh, longest defending champion. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind breaking another record. What's up, Schmodown? I'm back, jumping right into it with a title defense against the Hunter. The Hunter? Didn't he get second in the tournament? Am I just working my way backwards now? I don't think that it's fair that your name is spoken in the same breath as Alex Damon. Alex Damon, the greatest champion we've ever seen. I don't think there's a single person out there who could possibly take it from him. Bring on the matches. I want more matches. If I defend this belt two more times, I will single-handedly tie the record for most championship defenses. You want to come in here and you want to shake things up? You should quit while you're behind because you'll absolutely never be ahead. At least not as long as Alex Damon has that belt. This isn't exactly how I wanted it, but I'm extremely grateful for it. Like, I promise you, you draft me, I'll get you that belt. And I want to make good on that promise. I don't think Andrew's beating Alex, but I think that will be the the most tight Star Wars Schmodown match of all time. How many 
matches did Di Milan to lose total? How many rounds did, did he lose total? How many questions and by how many words did he lose by all year? One question. Well, it's not happening today. You thought I was hungry this season. You thought I was angry this season. You thought I was scary this season. Whoever holds that belt next season, the pain is coming for you. After that match happens, everybody else better be on top of their game because you're gonna be playing catch up with me instead of the other way around this time. Today brings home that belt. Today, he has a good time doing it. Today, Di Melanta kicks off his tenure as a Merc, wielding the gold. I've waited a long time for this moment. I am not gonna let it slip away. You better be ready, Damon, because you're in for your toughest fight yet. I'm here to get one more belt defense, and maybe I'm going to try to get him to smile during the match. I mean, he's so serious. Like, come on, Hunter. Let's go out there, have some fun, and get me another title defense. What do you say? The hunt continues. Frankly, it never stopped. Now, it's time to finish the job. I mean, you can't get more hyped up than that because it's there is a lot on the line. Look, and and Andrew Demolanta has to do something very, very. Um, he's got to beat the guy that nobody can beat. Alex Damon has never lost a one-on-one -on -one Star Wars match ever. Uh, so this is this is a first-time thing that he's going to try to do. But the other thing that he's got to do is he's got to beat Damon twice because Damon, because he's defended the championship, has you know he he gets an automatic rematch, and that'll happen in May. Damon's only got to beat Demolanta once. However, if he loses here tonight, that Patriots record is out the window. You know, the Schmodown was just a tiny whisper in the far corners of Skywalker Ranch up in Northern California. But as you said, Christian, this field is just getting more and more competitive. More competitors, worthy challengers are showing up for that crown slash lightsaber. And for Alex Damon, the force is strong in his family. I'm not sure if him and Molly are sisters like it would have been in a galaxy far, far away. But Alex is looking at Andrew DeMolanta right now and trying to remind him you're not a Jedi yet. That could change after these five rounds. All right, Mark, Probably are you ready to get going? A wise maneuver. I tease that I wore a special tie for this. And look, Christian, you see who's on the tie? That's uh, that's Kermit's grandpa, Yermit. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia schmodown. Five rounds for the movie trivia schmodown Star Wars Championship of the World. Introducing first, representing the Quirky Mercs, with a record of two wins, three defeats, he is the 2020 Ultimate Schmodown Star Wars, Andrew the Hunter, Dimolanta. The Hunter is here and a little bit more of a playful, quirky, fun Dimolanta we see this time around. Joining the dance party. I see that you have indeed joined the dance party, and I, and I think that that has at least helped, albeit maybe a little later, but you're still, it seems like you've kind of fallen into the quirky Merc style. How different is it from the quirky Merc energy to last year's Finstock exchange energy? It's a, it's a little less intense. I mean, we still, we still practice and still prepare as hard as we did, but, you know, a little lighter, a little bit more fun. This is exactly what I need. And I'm back to my old ways of having fun in the Shimoda. And that's what this is all about, right? It's fun. And his opponent representing the stars with a record of six wins, one defeat, and two knockouts. He is the reigning, defending, undisputed movie trivia schmodown 
Star Wars Champion of the World, Alex the Demon Damon! The champion is here. Alex, it seems like the same old dance, my friend. You now digital. You This is the second time you're going up to defend your championship twice. There are new contenders. This is a new contender you've never faced before. When I told you that this year it's not going to be one of those things that if you keep that you win, you'll play once a year. You could play two. You could play three. You could play four. And you said, that's fantastic. Bring it. What is it about the competition? What is it about continuing to do this over three years now that keeps you coming back and with that fire? Well, I mean, I started my channel because I love Star Wars trivia. I've always loved it. I've loved the goofy little details, the silly names, and it, it's just something that I have enjoyed continuing to learn more and more about. And Joseph Scrimshaw has said this very well in the past. Like, this is just one of the few places where you can go and you can say one of these silly names and people are going to cheer for you. Like, I, I can't get that anywhere else. All right, Mark, our contestants have arrived. The championship is about to begin. Five rounds. Please tell us the rules of round uh, number one. I appreciate your manners. You're welcome. And here they are in round number one. It is Star Wars. It is a championship match. You're going to have 10 questions from 10 different corners of movie trivia, schmodown, Star Wars know-how. Each question is for the point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing, at least not in round number one. That'd be too easy. You each have 15 seconds to get that correct answer down on whatever tablet, writing device, all that good stuff. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to the camera at the same time you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. But what I can say right now, it's probably going to be right. Each one of you have three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. Not sure you heard a question right. You want to buy yourself another 15 seconds? Use a jeté rule. You each also have one challenge to be utilized whenever you need to. You think an uh, answer's fishy, you didn't like the way something was ruled, use a challenge. We'll bring your manager in, you may delineate accordingly, and they will confirm and ratify that said challenge is taking place. Christian, the rules just keep getting better. Well, actually, they're the same, but these two competitors, they are in another galaxy entirely. We asked the champion, are you ready? This is where the fun begins. And the challenger, are you ready? You stole my line, Alex, I'm ready. <laughs> Then let's get ready to schmodown. Round number one, question number one. We're gonna start with Revenge of the Sith. Who went looking for Yoda the moment he saw the clone troopers attack, attack the Jedi Temple? Man, I, I was gonna have a bet as to which one of us was gonna mispronounce a word first, but uh, you snuck in there with attack. <laughs> I know, right up top. Five. Always bet on me. Four, <laughs> three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Alex. Bail Organa. Yes. And Andrew. Bail Organa. Yes. And you guys both did it. Just a reminder, please just put the, the boards right in front of you the way that you just did when you do it just for the when we edit a little later. We know that's so it's not uh it's not off screen. Thank you so much. Love the new graphics, by the way. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I did that all myself. All right. What's the uh, what's that's a blatant line? All right. What's the second question mark? I think we all knew that was a lie. Yes. Your next question. It's in the category of the Force Awakens. It's awake, and your query for a point. According to Ray, how does BB-8 respond when she asked him where he came from? I believe the same question was asked to me by Christian when I first met him at his barbecue. Same answer too. Yeah, well, you know. Fine. It's not going to say anything. Four, three, nah. two, one. Hands down, please. And Andrew. Classified, really. That is correct. And Alex. That's classified. Two, two. As we get to our next question, question three in this championship match, the Empire Strikes Back. What model of vehicle was modified by the Rebels to become the snow speeders on Hoth? What a battle this is so far already. It's only three questions. Ed. Yeah, and they just don't even break us. You and I get more sweaty asking the questions. I don't know. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. And Alex. The Incom T-47 Airspeeder. And Andrew. T-47 Airspeeder. Correct, on both. All right, so we got three, three. Three, three. Next question. 
Nerd alert, am I right? <laughs> All right. Your next question is in the Ted Turner Network frequently occupying Rogue One, a Star Wars story. When Krennic approached Galen at the beginning of Rogue One, Galen said that Krennic was confusing peace with what? We had a good time at this premiere, I remember that. Should sure play jump at the yes, uh, post party? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please, and Andrew. Sorry, Terror. That is correct, and Alex. Terror. Yes, all right, so four, four. Four, four, and now we get to our next question, Mark. This is question number five halfway through here solo solo what class of stormtroopers protect the convex transport on the snowy planet of vandor yeah my guess would be the answer nope yeah it's probably not too this movie makes me i get hungry for denny's five stop that four three two one Pens down, please. Pens down, please. And Alex. The range trooper. Yes, Andrew. Range trooper. It's exactly what we thought it was going to be so far. No one has even come close to missing as we see 5-5 five, five as we get to question six, Mark. Question six. That's right. I might be able to get this one because it's in the category of Return of the Jedi, formerly named Revenge of the Jedi. For one point, gentlemen, what article of clothing does Luke begin wearing before he gets to Dagobah and wears for the remainder of the film? Not a hacky sack, is it? I, I don't think you wear those. I think you kick them around kick with around your hippie them. friends. Oh, right. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Drew. A black glove. Yes, and Alex. A black glove. 6-6, six, six, ladies and gentlemen. 6-6, six, six, did you expect anything else? And now we get to question seven, the rise of Skywalker. Who says they win by making you think you're alone? It's so funny. Even, even the question writers, uh, because <laughs> we didn't need the color of the glove. They simply have a glove. Yeah, and these guys, um, exactly. Well, five. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Alex Damon. Zori Bliss. Yes. And Andrew. Zori Bliss. Tie game seven seven. Well, we know. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, seven 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 seven. We know who to uh, who who to come to once these two retire. They can write questions as well. So here's the uh, here's the next question. Mark question eight. As long as you and I aren't competing, Attack of the Clones. Episode 2, if you're keeping score at home. In Attack of the Clones, we learned that Padme served how many terms as Queen of Naboo? Simply don't know how these mm. two keep all this information inside of their head. I just don't yeah. understand. Doesn't seem like a fun job, that Queen of Naboo. A lot of pressure. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down. Andrew. Two terms. Yes. And Alex. Two. So eight, eight. Unbelievable stuff so far as we get to the ninth question. The Last Jedi. The casino on Canto Bight can be found on what Outer Rim planet? Yep. Ellis remains one for nine. Oh, if that. Come on. I got the glove one. Come on. All right, fine. Five. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And we go with Alex Damon. Cantonica. Yes. And Andrew. Cantonica. Nine, nine, ladies and gentlemen. Nine, nine so far as we get to, well, it might not be the final question. Is the last official question until we get a potential bonus question. Here is the 10th question here, Mark. That's right, perfect rounds loom. I just hope we're not boring Alex and Andrew too much. Your next question is in the category of Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. What giant beast of burden is spooked by a swoop bite as Luke Skywalker dives into Moss Eisley? 
just the two of these guys. Like these are some of the best of the best, hence why they're here right now. And this could be a perfect round for both of them. I don't even know what I just asked. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Andrew. Ronto? Yes. And Alex. Ronto. So they both they both did it. Perfect game for both so far. And now the bonus question comes in. So guys, because you both got it, same as the previous 10 questions, write it down, reveal it when you are called upon. Here is the question, the bonus question. In the Empire Strikes Back, who says they never asked me any questions? Say, as much as I like bantering with you, pal, I'm almost like just on the edge of my seat, just watching. Like, when who's gonna hit first? What's gonna happen? Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And we start with Alex Han Solo. That's 11 points. And Andrew Han Solo 11 11 at the end of round one. It is the round one we thought it would be. Round number two, Mark. How's it go? Unlike what Han said, it's not going to be a very short trip here today. Round number two is the wheel round, the wheel of fate, doom, and destiny, because it's Star Wars. Get it? Each competitor gets a spin at the virtual wheel. Once you settle on your category, you're going to hear five questions from that corner of the galaxy. Each question is worth two points. There is no penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which we think is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. Uh, remember, JTE rules still in play, challenge still in play, all that good stuff. And it is a tied ball game here, Christian, 11-11. And so the tiebreaker would be Alex Damon and his belt get to make the decision if he'd like to spin first or defer to the hunter. I'll just go ahead and go. Here is the wheel. Here's the spin. By the way, Star Trek goes way under any of those. I learned that too. He's taught me well. That's correct. Great handwriting, Roxy. Did you have to work on that or is that just natural? I just have great penmanship. Thank you so much for noticing, Mark. All right, so it lands on mixed bag. It lands on mixed bag. All right, so Alex, Roxy, 60 seconds to decide starting now. Yeah, I'd I, like to yeah. re-spin that. Let's get something that's focused on <laughs> one group a movie or something yeah. like that a category i agree alex let's spin it again while we're spinning it though i'm just talking to you reminding you that even if it ends up on mixed bag you've got this whatever it is you have the knowledge yes yeah, not the worst thing in the world nope does not matter you've got it no matter all right so now they what have chosen to spin again here is the spin here it is roxy i hear you do a good yoda impression you can't um, so it's a bold-faced lie Spins are happening, will they or won't they? Force Awakens. Force Awakens. You got this, Alex. I believe in you. Take your time. You've got this. We know you do. All right. So the champion is going to have five questions in the realm of the Force Awakens. Are you ready? I'm ready. First question. According to Han Solo, who stole the Millennium Falcon from him? Duquesne. That's two points. Question number two. Who plays the Jakku junk boss, Unkar Plot? Simon Pegg. Two points. In The Force Awakens, name the spy that reports BB-8's presence in Maz's castle to the First Order. Bazin Natal. And for your fourth question, fourth question. In The Force Awakens, how many parsecs does Rey mistakenly think the Millennium Falcon made the Kessel run in? 14. Correct. And your last question. Here it is. What causes the ragged, unstable appearance of Kylo Ren's cross guard lightsaber? <laughs> A cracked kyber crystal from when he failed to bleed it correctly. That's two points, yes. All right, so wow, what a round by the champion. 21-11, 21-11 as he just cleans through that category. And now we're going to remove Alex Damon and bring in Koi Jandrew. And here is the spin. We know what we want, we know what we don't, and we pretty mm -hmm. much want it all.
It is Ooh. the Empire Strikes Back. Go ahead and All take right. it. You're gonna take it. All right. Yeah. All right. We're gonna get five questions here, Mark. In a, uh, the Empire Strikes Back. You are correct, Christian, for two points, and now Andrew has five questions, each worth that same amount, two points. Andrew, the category of Empire Strikes Back, episode five, round two begins now, and here is your first question. What was Luke's call sign during the Battle of Hoth? Rogue leader. He got promoted, that is two points. That's two points, All right, here's question two. All right. In The Empire Strikes Back, when C-3PO is communicating with the Falcon, the ship says that the power coupling on the what axis has been polarized? On the negative axis. Yes, it was the negative axis. That is correct for two more points. And we move on to question three. In The Empire Strikes Back, according to C-3PO, what are the odds of successfully navigating an asteroid field? 3,720 to one. And yep. 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 All right, here's, right. here's the next question, question four. All right, this is your penultimate question in the exciting, thrilling world of Empire Strikes Back. In that film, episode five, the General of the Alliance is told that there is a fleet of Star Destroyers coming out of hyperspace from what sector? Sector four. It's the same sector where Harloff Minor is. Is that correct? No. Okay. Actually, they probably know better than I do. I don't know. Yeah, swing and a miss for us, but Andrew remains perfect in round number two. And to seal that perfection, your final question. In The Empire Strikes Back, what is the first line uttered by Boba Fett? As you wish. He crushed that job interview like Andrew the Hunter Dibelanta wow. just crushed that round. Two perfect rounds. Christian, do we, we just speed up to the five-pointer? Well, I mean, might as well at this point. But we are now getting to the third round. It's the betting round, Mark. How does the betting round go? The betting round gets interesting because we are going to wherever that place on Canto Bite was or here on Earth, Las Vegas, because each competitor is going to bet a series of their own points based on their confidence in a particular category. So Alex Damon, because he is the champion, breaking that tie, gets another spin at the wheel. The wheel's gonna settle on a category, we think, and a question numbering one will be asked from said category. Here's where it gets gambly. As soon as you see the category, we're gonna get the bet from each competitor. You may wager up to three of your points. You don't have to wager any points. You can also wager just one or two points. If you get the question correct, you gain that many points. Should you miss the question, you lose that many points because that is the life of a gambler. So Christian, Alex Damon is going to be giving that wheel a virtual spin with his mind one more time and let's see what category he gets. Thank you for playing along, Alex. I took improv lessons. <laughs> Round Force round Awakens, right back to it. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So uh, we're going to count down from three. When we hit it, please put your points into the private chat. Here we go. Three, two, one. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So here is the question in The Force Awakens. As BB-8 rolls across the sand dunes of Jakku before meeting Rey, what kind of creature is seen popping its head up out of the sand? This tends to happen in these championship matches, Christian. You sense the, the sense of humor fading away, the focus. Getting closer and closer to the prize. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Alex, how many points? Three. And you said? The Night Watcher Worm. Um, and Andrew, how many points? Three. And you said? A Night Watcher Worm. Both correct, both three points, and we see ourselves now 24, 24 perfect games for both the champion and the challenger as it is time for the speed round. It is known also sometimes as the make or break round. Mark, how does it go? Oh, I thought you were going to say the hyperspace round because it goes by really fast. That's right. It is the speed round, and in said speed round, each competitor is going to field 10 questions.
from various corners of Star Wars lore. Each question's worth one point. There is a penalty for missing a question. If you get it wrong, you lose a point. It's called the speed round because each competitor will have exactly 60 seconds to complete as many answers to the questions I will be administering as possible in that 60 second window. Should you go through all your 10 questions, your time will be done. However, you can say pass to any question I ask without fear of penalty for missing it. You simply say pass, I'll move on to the next question. Any questions that were passed, I will return to, provided there is still time left in the 60 second window. Your 60 seconds do not begin until I have completed asking the first question. So Alex and Andrew, Damon and Demolanta, Christian, they are tied still, and that means that it is Alex's right once again. A lot of decisions on your shoulders today, Alex. Would you like to go first in the speed round, or would you like to allow your opponent to compete first? This time, I will defer. Okay, Andrew, your speed round is about to begin. That timer, the 60 seconds, is going to pop up as soon as I'm done asking the first question. We'll start counting them. So, here we go. Your speed round begins with this question. On what planet does Galen Erso die? Edu. What is the name of the capital city of Naboo? Bede. Bright Tree Village is under the leadership of what Ewok? Chirpa. Who voices Yoda and the narrator in the Clone Wars film? Tom Kane. What was Obi-Wan's first line in A New Hope? Hello there. What landing pad was the Millennium Falcon directed to land on in Cloud City? 327. Who interrupts Han and Leia's first kiss? C-3PO. In The Empire Strikes Back, what was Wedge's call sign? Rogue Three. In episode one, Brian Blessed voiced which character? Ruger Nass. What villain said, only your hatred can destroy me? Darth Vader. Andrew DeMolanta's speed round is complete. All right, thank you to Andrew. And we are back, Mark. The champion is here, and it is his turn to answer some speed round questions. Your speed round begins with this question. On what planet does Galen Erso die? Edu. What is the name of the capital city of Naboo? Feed. Bright Tree Village is under the leadership of what Ewok? Chief Chirpa. Who voices Yoda and the narrator in the Clone Wars film? Tom Kane. What was Obi-Wan's first line in A New Hope? Hello there. What landing pad was the Millennium Falcon directed to land on in Cloud City? 327. Who interrupts Han and Leia's first kiss? 3PO. In The Empire Strikes Back, what was Wedge's call sign? Rogue Three. In Episode One, Brian Blessed voiced which character? Boss Nass. What villain said, only your hatred can destroy me? Darth Vader. Alex Damon's speed round is complete, Christian. All right, our competitors, our competitors are back. The tally is done. Both competitors went a perfect 10 for 10. So at the end of the fourth round, 34-34, a tie game as we get into the fifth and final round. Holy crap, I will say it. Fifth round it is. It is the fifth and final round, the championship round, ladies and gentlemen. Mark, how does it go? Love the gusto you put into that partner, but there's a good chance it's not the last round. Each competitor is going to give us a series of numbers. That's how we kick off the round. These numbers may range from 1 to 20. Each number corresponds to a unique planet in movie trivia schmodown, shall we say. It's a different category in Star Wars, really. Your first question is worth two points. Your next question, three points. Your final question, should we make it that far, is worth five big points. In the event of a tie at the end of round number five, we will go to sudden death overtime, which is looming large when you have competitors of this caliber. Again, 15 seconds to answer each question, and there is no penalty for missing a query, nor is there stealing. In round number five, nor is not a word, but if it is a word in Star Wars, these guys have that answer, Christian. It's going to be Alex Damon again, because we are tied 34 to 30. My goodness. Alex, you get to give us your three lucky numbers first. So from one to 20, what feels destined? I'm going to make it easy on you and just go two, three, five. Two, three, five for the champion and for the challenger. Eight, nine, ten. And Sabak, I like it. All right, so we are going to drop out. At the moment, we are going to drop out. Uh, Andrew DeMolanta, bring in Roxy. 
Roxy, 60 seconds, starting now. I mean, what happens after a heart attack? Because that's where I am right now. Are I, you okay? Do our, I need to talk you down? No, I'm n absolutely never, because there's never a single second in life that I don't believe in you. So that's why I'm okay, because you are the absolute greatest player. And you know, you've, you've set yourself up for success here. You have as much time as you need with these things. You have all of your JTEs. Take your time if you need it, although right now you've taken no time. It's like every round was a speed round for you, and that's working for you really well. Uh, I hope that you believe in yourself right now. I'm sure that you do, because this has been one of the best matches I've ever seen in my entire life. And I'm just going to stand by this. You're the heart of the stars. We're so proud of you and impressed with you no matter what happens. But I know that you're going to bring this one home for us. I'm ready. All right. Thank you to both Alex and Roxy. Going to remove them both. All right, Coy, you got 60 seconds starting now. An empire can only last for so long, and today we rebel. You are playing the game of your life. This is the best I've ever seen you play, and I got you in the first round of the draft for a reason. I am here to be the longboarding Chewy to your solo. I am riding co-pilot and so proud of you leading this force. You're taking your time when you need to. You're powering through when you need to. I haven't understood a single question, but I knew you had the answers. I didn't have to wait at any point to know if you got it because I knew you got it. How are you feeling, man? I'm feeling great, man. This is so relaxed. Again, let the answers come to me and, and do what we always discuss the, in the past meeting. So let's just do it. I'm, I'm ready. Clockwork. We got a two, a three, and a five, and then this is going to go longer than the Snyder Cut in overtime. I'm ready for it. All right. Thank you to Koi. Are we going to drop him out, bring back the champion? All right, so we are going to start with Andrew de Melanta, Mark. He chose category number eight, category number eight. And that would land us with heroes, heroes. All right, here's the first question. In Return of the Jedi, by what word does Luke address Vader for the first time on Endor's Imperial landing platform? Father. That is correct. Two points. All right. So now we bounce to the champion, Mark, who chose category number two. That's right. That's in the category of Star Wars Underworld. Hmm. It was not a movie. It's just a, a show. Kind of, it's, it could be. Can I'd, I'd watch it. For two points, Alex, to tie Andrew's lead, who hired Zam Wessel to try and assassinate Padme in Attack of the Clones? Django Fett. Yes, he did. And we are back tied, Christian. It goes back to the Hunter. All right. Well, the Hunter's going to get category number nine. Category number nine. Planets and locations. Planets and locations. Okay. Here is the question. Which planet does Beckett long to retire to in Solo, a Star Wars story? Gleanselm. Three more points. And we are just back and forth with that ping pong. And here is the three-pointer for Alex Damon. That's category number three. Category number three, Alex, is the one that started us off. A New Hope back in 77. And for three points and the tie, the question, what was the call sign for the Rebel base on Yavin's moon during the first Death Star battle in A New Hope? Base one. Very... Accurately titled, that is three points for Alex. We're tied again, Christian, and now it could come down to these next five-point questions. We're going to find out here because where we stand at the moment is that Dimolanta will get his five-pointer. He hits it and bounces right back to the champion. However, if he misses, Alex Damon will retain the championship one last time. Andrew, you have chosen category number 10. That is... The Force Awakens. Here it is. Five points. After escaping Jakku, where did Rey say that she would drop Finn and BB-8 off? Panema Terminal. For five more points, and the challenger is now done with his questions. And so here is where we stand now. If the champion hits his five pointer, we're going to sudden death. However, if he misses, Andrew Dimolanta will be the new movie trivia Schmodown Star Wars champion. Mark, he chose category number five. 
He did. It's a uh, it's one of those prequels. It's uh, Revenge of the Sith, Episode Three. Is your question for five points and the tie? Descended to sudden death and retain hopes of keeping that belt. While on their way to rescue Chancellor Palpatine, Obi Wan and Anakin are stuck on a stalled elevator. What is the elevator number that Obi-Wan repeatedly asks R2 to activate? 31174. They're never going to miss, Christian. <laughs> They're never going to miss. I was like, the sec when that came up, I said, this might be the... No, no, that's not the one. Okay. Uh, so it is tied. 44, 44, perfect five-round game at the moment as we get into sudden death. Sudden death, that could be. Someone asks, is that the first time ever? It very well could be. I don't remember it happening, but it is a championship match. Perfect all the way through. 44, 44, sudden death, Mark. How's it go? As the chat explodes, I remind everyone that uh, I have a question for you all. Did you get your money's worth? Did you get your money's worth yet? Well, we still have more Schmodown for you because sudden death goes as thus. Feels a lot like round number one, except it's a lot more, like a lot more pressure. We ask a question to the field of competition. Andrew and Alex then write down their best attempt at an answer on their writing surface. Once we ask them by name or nickname to reveal their answer after 15 seconds, they'll show it to their camera at the same time they verbalize their attempt into the microphone. Here's where it gets tricky. Still, each question for the point. However, both competitors get the question right. We move on to the next question. Both competitors miss the question. We move on to the next question. Should a competitor get a question right and their opponent does not, the correct answer or will be the Star Wars Schmodown champion of the galaxy. All right. So and once again, reminder that the one only one JT rule for both of you. So here we go. I asked the champion, are you ready? I'm still ready. And the challenger, are you ready? Ready. Here we go. All right. Question number one. Question number one, here we go. Okay. In the Clone Wars, which character says, soon the Jedi will not only be at war with you, Count, but the Hutt clan as well. Down their answers, it may just be a question of how many we ask. Five, four, three, Two, one, pens down, and Alex? Darth Sidious. And Andrew? Sidious. One point apiece, and Mark, our next question, uh, please. All right, gentlemen, your next question for a point and possibly to continue the match or win. After falling through quicksand, Ray heals what type of serpent creature in the tunnels on Hasana? You have a knife, Christian? Could have cut this tension? Seriously, five. This is crazy. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Dimalanta. A Vexus snake. And for Alex. A Vexus. Both correct. All right. So now we get to question number three. Question number three. Here is the question. Here we go. All right, gentlemen, for your next question. What is the name of the yacht that Dryden Voss travels in? Get a lawn chair ready. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Alex. First light. And Andrew. First light. Both correct. All right, next question, Mark. Next question. Here we go. Okay. Next way. It's in the so, category of Star Wars, if it helps. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 Thank it's, you. It's still Star Wars. Yes. Finally. Yes, yes. All right. Yeah. We, we may have to go off Star We may have to go Ewoks Caravan of Courage here in a sec. Seriously. Well, Bibiani will be happy. I mean, they're great movies. All right, for a point, and possibly the win, in Solo, a Star Wars story, what creature first seen in The Phantom Menace 
is a tasty delicacy that Dryden Voss offers to his guests, Beckett, Han Solo, and Chewbacca. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Andrew. Colo Clawfish, anyone? And for Alex. Colo Clawfish. And we now get to yet another question in speed round. This is question, I believe, number five. Here is your next question, gentlemen. Here's the next question. All right. Here it is. Okay. During the initial approach on the Death Star 2, what does Neenum express worry about to Lando? It's uh, matches like these where I regret standing up and announcing. Five. Repeat the question. First one. During the initial approach on the Death Star 2, what does Neenum express worry about to Lando? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Alex? That they don't have a reading on the Death Star's shield. And Demolanta. The Imperials are jamming them. And your winner! And Spell Movie Trivia Schmodown Star Wars Champion of the World, Alex the Demon Damon! Getting the shield down, the <laughs> shield being down for the attack is the answer there and we are we see that that is the end there as Dimolanta Dimolanta are you waving or something what are you doing are you challenging you I'm challenging to... I'm challenging I want to challenge I'm sorry right. to do this I want to challenge so what yeah, is the what? what is the challenge I'm taking a stab but like he it is a line it's like how can they be jamming us if they don't know we're coming so it's it, it, you, you said it, there's multiple answers that you would have accepted this one has to be one of them because Lando turns to them and says, well, how can they be jamming if they don't know we're coming? So, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's, my, that's my official challenge. Okay, and for the counter on that, Alex? Um, I guess just the wording of the question, the initial thing that Nine Nub, he says something, and Lando re replies, we've got to be getting some kind of re reading on that shield up or down. And right. then... So in Let's... the rule book, we're arguing that the phrasing allows for both as a possibility is our official challenge. Yes. All right. So let's uh, let's get to let's get to uh, we're going to talk to myself, Mark and PJ. We'll be right back. And we are back, Mark, for the ruling. The ruling of Andrew DeMolanta's challenge is upheld because Andrew DeMolanta also was accurate in his assessment that Nian Nub was concerned about jamming the signal, hence his Lando Calrissian's immediate reply to his co-pilot. Alex Damon did get an exact quote. However, an exact quote was not necessary in answering this question and so it could be the shield being down it could also be the jamming of the signal both answers are correct and we continue sudden death for the championship all right we keep on going challenge upheld by Demolanta. he still has his challenge alex damon also still has his challenge no more jtes for Demolanta as we get to our next question here it is mark it is in attack of the clones yeah, upheld. I meant the challenge was upheld, not the, the ruling. Well, okay. All right. We continue on. And your next question, four points. And again, I know it's tough to come back from a challenge like that. It is possibly for the championship. Who votes in Padme's stead when she's in hiding after the assassination attempt on her life? I just have to turn the chat off here. Yeah. <laughs> Flying and so bad. Five, four, 
Three, two, one. Hands down. And Andrew. Jar Jar. And Alex. Jar Jar. All right. Both correct. Here's the next question. Here's the next question. What is the name of the clone commander in charge of the troops under the leadership of the Jedi Knight Ayala Sakura? Christian, we are at 50 points apiece. Wow. Crazy. You talk about drama. It has everything. This match that you possibly could want. Five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. First one. What is the name of the clone commander in charge of the troops under the leadership of the Jedi Knight Ayala Sakura? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down and Alex. I just remembered it. I didn't have it written down. Can I say it? And Andrew? CC5052 Bly. And your winner and new yeah! movie trivia showdown yeah! champion of the world, Andrew the Hunter De Challenge a perfect game, sudden death, 51 to 50. Andrew Dimolanta wins the movie trivia showdown, Star <laughs> Wars Championship, 51 to 50. Unbelievable. All right, Troy and Andrew, I almost don't want to let you go because you're in such a state at the moment, but we're going to give it over to Jen. Congratulations. We will see <laughs> you second. I think I'm starting to understand why C-3PO is so apprehensive about everything because he probably announced matches like this and it's like, I just don't know if I have the oil in my joints for another one of these, but yeah. it was just so much fun. And I'm trying to think of any sort of event that happened in Star Wars lore that would be reminiscent of the battle that we just, I mean, you got the Battle of Yavin, the Battle of Endor. The only thing that could compare with this is when the Monstars took on the Toon Squad, Christian. Yeah, this is the greatest Star Wars match of all time. There's just no, there's, there's there's no argument uh, to be made. When you look at Star Wars, when you look at why we love these movies in the first place, it's not to yell at each other online about which movie's the best. We know the answer is Return of the Jedi. It's because we love celebrating it, and I don't know that you could have concocted a better celebration of the galaxy far, far away and a better display of Force powers than what Demolanta and Damon brought to the table today. We are eternally in their debt for that, and all you fans out there, Enjoy the spoils of victory. Ladies and gentlemen, wanted to thank you for joining us here tonight. It's movies, movies, movies. It's all we get day in and day out around this place. We here at the Schmodown sending messages of love, unity, and peace to everyone here on Earth. And as far as that galaxy far, far away, the Force was clearly with both Damon and Demolanta today. Congratulations to the new Star Wars champion, Andrew the Hunter Demolanta. Peace out, mother Fs. Oh, call back. <laughs>